um, after about a year that I, I was a Muslim, um, I, was, I was living in this country, um, working here and there, uh, giving French class lessons to students just to support myself. Um, wh one of my uncle's colleague at work, my, hus my uncle worked for a um, petroleum company, um, one of my uncle's colleague approached me and asked me uh, uh, if I wanted to marry him. He's from Qatar. Um, at first, I completely refused because I, I didn't think I was ready to get married and I really wanted to know more about the religion before I got married. Um, but I, I kept on thinking about this person because as I was not Muslim earlier, uh, he used to visit my uncle for work. And I had seen how he wouldn't look at me, although I was a teenager with no hijab, nothing. And I tried to talk to him a few times and he wouldn't, um, he wouldn't try to be friendly with me. And my uncle had tried to make him drink a few times. He, he kind of thought it was funny to make, him, to, to make him drink. And this person had refused persistently um, alcohol in front of me. So this really gave me the impression that he was uh, a strong practicing Muslim. And I had to look into um, reasons why I would refuse to marry him. Um, I, st I told him no um, once, and then I decided to pray Salat al istikhara In that small little book that my friend had given me, there was a recommendation to pray this prayer if you wanted to take a decision and you were not sure. Um, I, I prayed this prayer um, after Fajr. I wasn't sure when to pray it, and I didn't have anybody to ask to. I prayed this prayer after Fajr and went back to bed. And I remember waking up um, in the morning, sitting on the bed and calling his name. And I had read in my book that if you pray istikhara, there's a, a chance that the answer to your prayer will come in the form of a dream. So when I woke up the next morning saying his name, I thought, oh, well, here you are. You thought that you're going to get an answer straight away from your, your prayer. This is all your imagination. You are actually not saying his name. And I prayed this three times, and three times it happened. I kept on waking up uh, with his name. I was saying his name. And subhanAllah, um, I decided to get married to, to him um, after this praying of istikhara. That happened about uh, 13 years ago. Um, and um, I have a daughter whose name is Maryam. She's 11 years old. And alhamdulillah, she has decided to wear her hijab when she was nine years old. And she's very serious about it. Alhamdulillah, we're very proud of her. The, the thing which attracted me to look into Islam was the family relationship and the importance of family and the relationships that maybe I had missed as a, um, as a kid in my country. Uh, they were all there. Everybody was you know, close to each other, families, and people valued um, their relatives and valued their children, and children valued their parents, unlike where I was coming from. Uh, one of the things which really attracted me to Islam also is the protection of the woman. Um, in my country, you're a female, you're a male, you're equal when it comes to everything, including having to go and fight outside and there's no respect for women. One of the things which really, really is very strong in Islam is women are protected. I remember this happened to me quite recently, maybe a year or two ago. I got out of gas in my car and I had to stop on the side. Within three minutes, I had a young Qatari boy um, park his car next to mine and he asked me to stay in the car and he went and got gas and filled my car and he left and I never heard from him again after that. I mean like he wanted to protect me so bad but he didn't want anything else than just the reward of Allah. This is one of the things which is very precious in Islam that women are protected. Uh, if the religion is practiced the proper way, women will be protected. Um, sometimes people take this a step further and I think this is one of the misconceptions which happens in the West. Um, this is sometimes reflected as the women are tight and closed down. Um, I guess it sometimes can happen. But if Islam is um, respected and if Islam is practiced properly, none of this should happen. Uh, uh, one more thing which really attracted me is the, the hijab and the cover. Because where I come from, if you don't have the right body and the right outfit and the right hair and the right style, you may not be respected in many areas of your life. And I didn't think that the way I dressed should impact how people uh, value me. They should value what's inside. If what's inside is good, it doesn't matter how it's wrapped. When you get a gift, 
what really matters is what is the gift itself, not how it, not how it is wrapped. And I thought the hijab gave me an opportunity to be equal with everybody else and to be able to prove to people my goodness, not how I looked. I, didn't, I don't think this is a good way to start relationships or work or if you are judged by your cover. You should be judged by what your qualities are and what your competence is and what your qualities are. This really attracted me in Islam. And I know it's sometimes difficult for Muslim women to cover. Um, I don't blame them. This is between them and Allah. But for me, it was one of the things which attracted me to Islam. And I feel really sad when I hear that it's difficult for some sisters. And I pray to Allah that it makes it easy for them. Because this is really a blessing. And alhamdulillah for, for the scarf that we wear and the cover that we wear and our attitude in general as women, it makes men respect respects us. Alhamdulillah. Um, I also liked the fact that as a Muslim, you pray directly to God. You don't need somebody to be your, um, taking your prayers and giving them to God. As a Christian background, I had come to know that Christians um, don't always pray to God uh, himself because they pray to, they give their prayers to a priest who takes them to God. For me, Islam was like, you know, Allah created me and I talk to him. They say that if you want God to talk to you, read the Quran. And if you want to talk to God, then pray. Well, I think this is a very simple give and take relationship that is very precious in Islam. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.